Hey there, so I'm gonna uh, show how to create the side menu and uh, how to display different types of uh, different forms or groups uh, on a page based on uh, click on other elements. So I'm gonna have this page, uh, let's say, not fixed. Uh, let's make it a row. Let's make it, uh, well, actually, I'm not gonna change anything in here. I'm going to add a group, uh, which is going to have, which is going to be a row. And I'm going to remove this to make sure we can just differentiate between the page and the group. All right. So I have this name. It's going to be uh, max width would be, let's say, 1200 pixels. Okay, minimum at the moment. Max minimum height would be 100%. All right. So what you're going to see even right now. So what we want to do is we want to make sure this is centered. Uh, I think this will do. Hmm, not this one. I think with the main one. This is this is the page structure. So now this has to be centered in the in the middle. See, now this is my website content. Like, it's always going to be in the middle. So even if I... See, this is... Oh, everything is going to be, like, in the middle. So, that's cool. Now, let's move past this. I'm going to create another, another group. Um... And um, let me change the uh, color here as well. So I'm going to say it's, uh, let's say it's a column, because I'm about to do something column stuff in there. And let's say it's a 30% with parent. And... Uh, Let's say um, it's 30% as well. And let's do 100%. All right. And we're going to have gives us the same thing. So basically, I've copied this uh, group in here. I'm going to group sales tax. You want to understand why I called this sales tax. Uh, I'll make it max width 70%. I'll leave mean width to where it is. And let's do 20% from there. I mean, 20 pixels from left, 20 pixels from the right. And um, this one is a, let's make it a column. And let's push individual groups already. This is going to be a group item. Let's change it to flat color. Actually, just so that you guys remember, this is not a this is not a good practice to do. It's just for the example right now, like so that I can move fast. So, group item one, group item two. And I'm gonna push this to the right. And I'm gonna make 20 pixels from top, 10 pixels from the bottom. I'm gonna do 10 from the bottom and this probably doesn't need to have any thing from the bottom. And this is going to be, let's say, uh, either aligned parent or row will do as well. I don't like, personally, I don't like using aligned parent at all. So I'm going to um, try to 
use the uh, row and I'll push uh, a text in here text is going to be sales tax right and I'm gonna let's do another one I can do body and what I'm gonna do like this is in the middle right now because the group like parent group is a row and this is chosen like this alignment is chosen if I do left it's gonna go left right etc so uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I always like to do this thing with uh, with texts there is no minimum and I always like to check fix width to, to, to content. And that's when you get the real size or real dimensions of the element. And I would like to push it down. And actually, let me, let me remove this too, and I'll just copy and paste this one once more now. Okay. Instead of sales tax, let me do income tax. Make sure to always get the naming right. And let's do value added tax. It's called VAT. VAT. Right? And just for the purposes of making it nice. tax this okay this has to be named group VT and first one is group sales tax so that everything is nice and clean all right so now this was the group sales tax all right so just so you know why you are not going to make any mistakes like this is group sales tax and this is group sales tax as well but when you're looking for the items all of the groups are in the uh, in here and then group site menu and group sales tax this one is under the group site menu and this one is actually this one so you're not going to like enter like make any confusions between these two So let's keep going. So we've got group sales tax. I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure this element is not visible on page load. And I'll do, okay, before I do this, I'm going to do this, this following. So when sales tax is clicked, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to element actions, set state. So I'm going to, do custom states. So if you know how to use custom states, that's good. If you don't know how to use custom states, this is not a tutorial for custom states. It's, but but just to accomplish this specific mission to do like uh, to uh, display uh, groups on click on the left hand side, like whatever menu items you've got, this is going to be like um, enough to know. So you don't be you don't need to be an expert of uh, custom states. So um, so I'm setting the custom state of page dashboard to like, uh, I'm going to create a new one, group view, I'm going to call it. And let me, it's a custom state, so group view. Uh, set type, it's going to be text. And the value is going to be sales tax. All right. So we've created the custom state now when the sales tax is clicked the page will have this custom state so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to tell this group group sales tax that it's not visible at all until the page uh, pages custom state group view is sales tax but make sure the writing and spelling has to be correct and also the cases matter like whether it's uppercase or not so um, I'm gonna do the same thing uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this 
and I'll hide the sales tax. I'll show the. Oh, okay. When you have something to hide and unhide, you have to make sure to collapse when hidden. All right. So now when I hide this, it's going to go away. And now I'm gonna display. I'm gonna tell it the same thing, but now it's going to be group income tax. And I'm going to change this to income tax. So I have not made this income tax workflow yet, but I know it's gonna be there, right? So I can easily do it. And then I'm going to do VAT, VAT. And here I'm gonna make sure it's collapse, uh, it's not visible. And let me change the color, or we don't need to change. We don't need to change the color. I'll just I'll just change the uh, title of it. So group uh, VAT. Now I'm going to add the title so that this is VAT. I don't know. And we need to actually let me do H1 or something. Okay, VAT. And let me remove this do this. this okay so now I can probably copy and paste this title in here as well so instead of uh, this is going to be income tax and if I copy this all right and this is going to be sales tax. Let's see. Let me fix this in here as well. All right. So now I have to just initiate the workflows. When this is clicked, element action, set state, state of page, custom state view group or group view is income tax. And uh, when VAT is clicked, so I just realized I made a very uh, rookie mistake. Uh, so what I what I've done here is I've set the condition. So when page page dashboards custom state group view is sales tax, but then it, it, I have never defined anything. What has to happen when uh, this condition is true? Uh, so basically, we're going to do this element is visible, and I have to do the same exactly the same things to other groups, and we are all set. Hide this, show VAT. This element is visible, boom, and we're good. Let me remove the debug mode. And when I click on sales tax, income tax, VAT, income tax, sales tax. So here's another thing. Now, when if you paid attention, when the page was loaded, there is neither of the groups shown. So there is a couple of things. You can either drop some element in here telling the user or visitor to sort of choose any of those or just to click uh, on any of those to display the items in here. However, what we can do is we can just simply go to work uh, workflow and create another workflow in general when page is loaded this this is another uh, condition that we can uh, edit use as a trigger so when the page is loaded I'm gonna set the state of the uh, page to group view again to sales tax so that like just because it's first uh, first group in our Thing. So now when I click on this, it's going to be there by default. So sales tax is there. When I click on income tax, VAT, these are changing. So what you could do as well, if like in, in some cases, you don't want the user to be able to skip the step. Like if it's like some type of a form, like the idea in here is for me is that if person wants to like submit sales tax, but in, in, in an imaginary world, 
you click on sales tax and the form will be displayed in here when you click on income tax income tax submission form will be displayed here the same thing with the VAT but the thing is you what, what you could do is um, you could remove uh, workflows on clicks on of these items and create next uh, or like submit button and when the button is clicked only after that it will display the following uh, following um, group by assigning it another custom state so you will control the custom state of the page through the bit buttons instead of the side menu items hopefully this is clear and uh, yeah let me know guys if you have any questions in uh, in the comments below and I'll try to uh, create another video to uh, another explainer merci